This week on Melted Reality, we're going to relive my childhood by making a place for my Star Trek action figures. Let's get going. TNG fans will be familiar with that table from Engineering, known as the Master Systems Display, or MSD for short. And not to be confused with the Master Situation Monitor that takes up the back wall. It can be hard to get a really clear look, so here are some pictures from the old fact files. It's a pretty simple shape, it's just two octagons with a thing in between and a computer on top. Early iterations had this weird looking white thing, but we're going to stick with the black version. And so while I know the MSD's rough shape, I don't know the dimensions of each of its little parts. So from this and some other clips, I can see that the table comes to about junk level on most people, and that someone can fit in between the middle section, and that the end caps are about shoulder width. I'm going to be scaling this to the original Playmates figures from the 90s, as well as the newer Star Trek figures, so I break up my calipers and start taking some measurements. I do some advanced four dimensional math and these are the figures that I come up with. For those playing along at home though, just be advised, these numbers are a bit wrong and I change them by the end of the project, but it's what my first prototype is built with. So I jump into FreeCAD and I start designing the countertop. I found it easy to start with the basic shape and then start applying the dimensions and angles, otherwise FreeCAD was getting a bit confused. I leave a bit of a lip at top so that when I apply the computer graphics later, it'll sit flush with the counter. And I cut out some sections for the LED light to shine through. Last we build the computer and add the base, then it's off to the printer. I use the Neptune 4 Pro with regular PLA. The base walls end up with a little bit of stringing. And the print supports on the sloped section leave a horrendous finish, but overall that's okay. And I'm ready to move on to the painting section. Before I start painting, I have to figure out exactly which color to use. So I pull up some reference shots and with this magnificent bastard's help, I figure out which of my scale 75 colors will be the best. And we settle on golden skin. Then it's off to the vortex mixer. After a quick prime, we put down a base coat. I also paint the countertop black to help hide any problems when I apply the graphics in a minute. I use a few online references to create my own countertop images, and then I print them out into regular paper. The biggest challenge and biggest flaw of this prototype was being able to cut all the graphics to the exact shapes. I tried a few different ways to create the templates for the counter, but none of them really worked all that well, and in the end I ended up going back to FreeCAD, quickly designing exact shape fitting templates and then printing them off. Because of the nature of 3D printing though, they still weren't spot on, but they were as good as it was going to get. You'll see as well that I add this clear bit of plastic to the top because I really wanted to sell the effect that this was a computer screen. But it just didn't work out and you'll see that I end up taking it off. Finally, after adding the LEDs, we see how it looks with all the characters. It looks great from a distance, but there's a lot of deficiencies, mainly around the roughness of the slope and the edges of the, of the graphics. I also realize there's no reason to not be lighting the entire countertop. The biggest problem though is that the dimensions are off. You'll see these are all definitely above junk level, and the proportions just aren't quite right. So I remeasure a few things and head back into FreeCAD. With the next iteration, I had a frame to put the computer in, although I make a little mistake in this print, and I did a tiny lip around the edges that the screen will sit on. I also do the big brain move of printing the slope upside down so that all the supports are on the inside this time, and you won't see any roughness from that. And I made this adorable little sled for the LEDs. And this is all an improvement, but I realized this still didn't fix the problem with trying to make a neat computer screen. So I'm back to FreeCAD one last time. 
With this design, the biggest innovation was having the screen sit on top of the sloped section and then having a frame go on top of that. And the several millimeters at the frame's edge helped to hide any neatness issues of the computer screen. And both the frame and computer help hold the plastic into place, so there isn't even need for any glue. As you can see how that all works here. The sled helps keep the LEDs in the right place and pointing in the right orientation. I do end up rewiring it as this is a bit rough. And probably I should use an LED strip anyway. And this time I can use the frame itself as the template to cut out the plastic. I really wanted to use overhead projector slides to print the graphics onto, but it didn't arrive in time, so instead I have to use decal paper. It's actually pretty useful stuff. It prints on any inkjet printer, and you just have to add several layers of acrylic spray on top to seal in the ink. I end up using about six. Then you just dunk it in water for about a minute, and it releases from the paper underneath. Then you slide it onto the clear plastic. Words of the wise though, wet the plastic first before you put the decal on, and that helps move it around and position it better. This brand is pretty durable, and you can lift it multiple times to help move things around. And you can also use a wet Q-tip to help roll out bubbles. I overcut the decals here thinking it would help me uh, position things, but it was more of a pain in the butt, so I wouldn't bother doing that. And the screens end up looking pretty terrific, and I'm really happy with how translucent they are. And you can see on the counter top that the edges are a bit rough, but that's exactly what the frame was designed to hide. Before putting it all together, I paint the insides white with craft paint, just to help reflect the light around a bit more evenly. And finally, we can see the proportions are all correct. And it looks great next to both sets of figures. So while I'm editing this, two exciting things just happened. One, I found a PLA that's the exact color that I wanted to print in. So there's no more messing around with Argyle. Second is that the OHP slides arrived. They print really cleanly, but they are very transparent. So I end up scuffing up the back with some sanding paper and adding a few layers of translucent plastic just to dull things down. But they look amazing. Let me know in the comments if there's any other particular Star Trek set pieces you'd like to see me make. Thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one.